The biggest knowledge gaps in payroll stem from a lack of foundational understanding of the various elements that make up the Australian labour relations system. You have the national employment standards, and then there's the modern awards, and in some situations you may even have your own contracted employment conditions. If you're not careful, you'll end up on Fair Work's name and shame list for non-compliance. So I'm here to help you close that gap. Specifically, I'm going to teach you what the NES is and why it's a foundational aspect of Australian employment law, how to quickly identify which modern award applies to each employee, and when employment conditions override both NES and awards. Ready to jump in? Let's go. Let's start with the National Employment Standards, or NES for short. Think of the NES as the foundation that sets the absolute minimum for employee entitlements in Australia. It's made up of 11 minimum standards that cover everything from hours of work to leave and even termination requirements. Now, these minimum standards apply to all employees covered by the national workplace system, regardless of any award, agreement or contract. In other words, you can't offer anything less than what's in the NES. There are 11 minimum standards, and these are them here. You'll see that quite a few of them cover leave entitlements. There are a few on working hours and arrangements, and then also how to handle converting casual staff to full or part-time employees. If we click into maximum weekly hours, you'll see that it's 38 for a full-time employee. And if we click on annual leave, you'll see that full-time and part-time employees get four weeks of annual leave based on their ordinary hours of work. So those are the 11 minimum entitlements. We have actually made a video covering each of these 11 entitlements in detail, which you can check out here. Now, let's move on to modern awards. If you think of the NES as the foundation, modern awards are the next level up. They build on top of the NES to give employees in specific industries or occupation additional minimum entitlements. There are more than 120 modern awards that cover most people working in Australia. They set minimum standards for things like pay rates, hours of work, rosters, breaks, allowances, penalty rates and overtime, and different types of leave. So, how do you figure out which modern award applies to your employees? Well, it depends on the industry you're in and the specific job they do. Some of the most common modern awards cover industries like shads, retail, fast food, hospitality, cleaning services, aged care and nursing, and building and construction. But even within these industries, there can be different awards for different occupations. For example, in the building and construction industry, you've got separate awards for general on-site work, joinery work, plumbing, and electrical work. To find the right award, you can use the Fair Work Commission's Find My Award tool. But be careful, sometimes an employee's role might not neatly fit into one award. In those cases, you might need some expert advice. Once you know which award applies, you can head over to paycat.com.au and find our jargon-free summaries that essentially breaks down how each award works in an easy to understand format. There are also summaries of the classification tables, all the different pay rate tables, and a bonus payroll checklist. Now, what happens when you have your own employment contracts or enterprise agreements? Well, these can provide entitlements on top of the NES and modern awards, but they can't undercut the minimum standards set by the NES. So, let's say you're an employer in the retail industry. Your employees are covered by the General Retail Industry Award 2020, which is the relevant modern award for your sector. Now, you decide to offer your employees an employment contract that includes some additional benefits. For example, you might offer five weeks of annual leave instead of the four weeks required by the NES, 12 days of paid personal or carer's leave per year, rather than the 10 days mandated by the NES, or a higher base rate of pay than the minimum set out in the General Retail Industry Award. But let's say you try to include a clause in the employment contract that states employees are only entitled to three weeks of annual leave per year. This would be undercutting the minimum standard of four weeks set by the NES, and therefore would not be legally valid. Or if you attempted to pay your employees less than the minimum wage rates outlined in the General Retail Industry Award, this would also be unlawful as it undercuts the minimum standard set by the modern award. So, if you've got an enterprise agreement in place, you'll need to make sure it at least meets the minimum wage rates and conditions in the relevant modern award. And if any base rates in the agreement are lower than the award, then the award rates apply instead. This is really important because getting it wrong can land you in serious trouble. Breaching the NES or not paying award rates can lead to big fines. As I mentioned at the start of this video, Fair Work has no problem naming and shaming people that underpay their staff. They literally have a section on their website for it and small businesses aren't immune. The key is to stay on top of any changes to the modern awards that apply to your business. The Fair Work Commission reviews minimum wages each year, usually around July. 
so you need to make sure you're keeping your pay rates up to date. The easiest way to keep on top of this is by using automated payroll software. This type of software is designed to simplify compliance with payroll laws and regulations, including modern awards. One of the biggest benefits of using an automated award interpreter is increased accuracy. The software is programmed with the most up-to-date modern award information, so you can be confident that your employees are being paid correctly. Some payroll software even comes with pre-built modern award templates. This means the award interpretations are built in from day one, helping ensure compliance across rostering, time and attendance, and payroll. Now that you have a foundational understanding of how the labor relations system works, we can move on to the more detailed elements, like how to distinguish between employment categories and when you should pay your staff allowances. We will cover each of these topics in a separate video under the Payroll 101 series, so stay tuned.